anyway so the i'll i'll get started um we have a packed agenda uh let me see if this moves okay we have a packed agenda um as you can see and um, we have talks um from different vendors and different facilities uh talking about their computing resources um some things to keep in mind um i have invited these people mainly for their session to come and give their presentation um some of them might join early and and hang around uh, when others are presenting uh but in most cases um they will leave um uh, uh to get other work done um as soon as their talk is over so if you have uh, questions um it's best to ask uh, when they are presenting and uh, don't keep them for later um maybe they'll include their email addresses too um uh, on their slides uh, or be available or in the in the general slack session um that they can answer them when you post a question um all the material that is being presented is non nda so if there is some nda stuff uh, that is not being presented in these sessions um and they don't be included in the slides so there are some questions uh that they won't be able to answer uh because it could be nda material um so there are three um distinct type of talks um that we have organized um one is um, each of the facility which is um OLCF NERSC and Argon uh presenting on their upcoming uh pre exascale or exascale systems so that would be pulmutter uh frontier and aurora um these are not organized all together i had to find out when these speakers are available and kind of uh um uh put them in and so they are all not together but those are three talks where uh the presenters will be talking about the computing resources and uh the computing hardware and a little bit of software i think um, you would get a chance to hear more about uh, software in uh, subsequent days i know tomorrow there's a programming models uh, presentation um all day presentation led by rajiv on mpi and open mp so you and other programming models so you would hear that but um uh, but these guys will give an overview of the software technologies too and then you have all three of them actually use the hpe's uh, uh slingshot uh, interconnect to connect the compute nodes and so but um but uh, and they would they would cover that in their slides too and some of it would be redundant because you'd hear them for each of them uh but we have a separate interconnect session um led by eric and igor from hpe and uh, they'll be talking about their roadmap and uh what's different um about these interconnects and uh, um you know how you can collect uh, data and uh, um you know use the counters and and stuff like that so a little more in depth about interconnects in general as opposed to what is being covered in the Kolmatar Aurora and Frontier sessions um end of the day we also have uh, a state of uh, quantum computing which is more uh, out there um so the test beds that are available and uh, the qis applications that are available that uh, that is becoming uh, much more of interest uh, in the doe circles that will be presented by yuri he is very closely associated with it um he is from argon and he'll talk about that um and the rest of the talks um are all about machine learning hardware and uh, we are having a lot of pathfinding projects um where we are trying to integrate uh, these um, ai accelerators so pulmutter aurora and uh, and the frontier have gpu accelerators so we won't cover them separately you have separate talks they will be covered in those sessions but the machine learning accelerators um that will be covered um, in the rest of the sessions and i've invited each of the vendor um each of the vendors that we work with um that we have test beds uh cerebras crock uh habana uh and uh, samanova to come and give a presentation as, about their hardware um some of these talks uh, might go a little more deeper 
uh, in the computer science aspects of hardware and things like that, but I've kind of asked them to stick to um, what a developer, an application developer or a software developer would be interested in, um, how best to make use of their technology. So uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, there are only questions, there are no stupid questions or smart questions. So don't feel shy, um, ask them and uh, they should be able to explain um, why they chose a design path or another. All right. Um, so this is just to give you uh, an overview of the systems um, in the DOE facility space um, that is available. The ones in the, I hope you can see my mouse, um, the ones, the Trinity, Sierra, Crossroads, and El Capitan, these are in the NNS, NNSA space. They are the closed systems. The open systems that we are talking about is in the top. Um, what's available in the facilities, uh, there's data at Oregon, there's Summit at Oak Ridge, and there's Corey at uh, Lawrence Berkeley um, or NERSC. Um, you would have access to them or a subset of the system or a similar system um, in the coming days. And you know you would be testing your application or software on these things. And what we are focused on on the talks today is these upcoming free exascale and exascale systems that would be in, available anytime from today to um, the next couple of years. So that's Perlmutter, Aurora, and Frontier. So that's where the NDA comes into play. They may not be able to present all the material uh, that you would love hearing about uh, just because it's still under NDA. And all these systems, as I said, use the slingshot network and we'll have a separate talk on that. Um, so why these uh, machine learning accelerators that I mentioned? Um, there's a surge of uh, scientific uh, machine learning recently. Um, you know, uh, many of the traditional HPC simulations had started using uh, surrogate models, data-driven models, um, started co-defining with experiments and all that, which is all AI-driven. So there's a need for integrating um, AI uh, into traditional HPC. And that is what is happening and how best to do that uh, in both the application space and hardware space and the software space is what we are all trying to figure out. Um, this is a slide which basically shows uh, like Aurora, it's not just a computing resource. It's closely tied to the experimental facility here, uh, APS. And uh, we are trying to drive um, some of the simulations through AI. And that's why we are exploring all these accelerators and how they would fit in um, or tied to the computing resource that we already have. These capabilities of AI systems, um, as I said, I'm, you know, uh, there are many. Um, we have uh, four of them presenting today. Um, and you would, when, you, when they present on their hardware, you'll see that uh, um, there are differences uh, or uniqueness of their architectures. And they'll be talking about um, why they think their architecture um, provides better performance than their competition. Um, and uh, these could be data flow architectures or they have uh, custom hardware to do AI type of operations, which is like uh, matrix multiplications or convolutions. Um, and then they'll try and accelerate training and inference phases and run large models too. So um, try and understand uh, uh, what each accelerator is capable of and ask them, you know, questions about why they choose this design path as opposed to something else. Uh, it need not all be about performance. It could be about power and other things too. Um, so it'd be good to, to, to interact with the speaker and understand that. And so these are the, um, the systems that we are talking about. Um, due to, due to um, this being a single day um, set of talks, I couldn't invite all of them. And uh, so we had to leave a few out, um, but thanks to all the vendors who agreed to come and spend uh, uh, 45 minutes to one hour of their valuable time presenting on this. So let's make good use of it um, to ask questions 
and um, I'm sure they would be very eager to answer them too. So that's the last slide I had. Um, any questions before we get started? All right, if you're typing something on chat, I won't be able to see it. So let me stop sharing first. And then um, Andy, are you on? Yep, I see Andy there too. So one of the things I told all of them and I'll let you know before you start is um, you can, you can uh, it's up to you. You can ask people to interrupt you as you present or um, you can stop at opportune moments and say, hey, I'm here to take questions and things like that. Um, I will interrupt you about five minutes before your time ends and let you know that you have five more minutes uh, so that you can wrap it up and we can keep uh, stay on schedule with the other speakers too. Kumar, we have a question on the chat. What is the difference okay. between the different system open versus close? Oh, the, the open is the ones that you can send a project request and get access to. Closed would be more... Uh, um, Go ahead, uh, Ray, you answered that. <laughs> Close to people, once that you may not get access. So to open means general research community can apply for time on it. And closed generally would mean that only the people of that facility can access it. Uh, you know, for example, um, some machine that is dedicated to classified work. Correct. All right, let me stop my video. And Andy, you can start sharing. And uh, we have one more question. Will hardware okay. architecture cover CPU memory and interconnect details and yes. how it differs yes. from von Neumann and Harvard architectures? Um, I don't know about that specifically, but you can ask them about it. Uh, but uh, the hardware would cover all of them, compute memory and the interconnects. And we do have a separate interconnect session too uh, today. <laughs> 